Hey, everybody. I am so excited to get to share with you today my new friend, Sue Nelson Kibbe. Before I ask her to introduce herself, I just really wanted to, to tell you why she came to mind for me when we started talking about this episode, exploring new strategies, new spiritual capacities that are needed for really the new frontier that's before us as the church. Uh, the landscape has changed dramatically, certainly, in these last two pandemic years, but um, not necessarily in ways that weren't already there, but yet have been accelerated by our pandemic reality. And, and certainly there, uh, there are new capacities that we have to, to engage in and to, to develop as uh, leaders in the church over this, uh, this season. Um, and into the new into the new reality that we're all living in. So, Sue, why don't you introduce yourself the way you like to be introduced and tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Thank you so much, Heather. My name is Reverend Sue Nilsson Kibbe. I'm a United Methodist clergy elder, and my appointment right now is as the director of the Bishop Bruce O. Innovation Center, which is at United Theological Seminary in Dayton, Ohio. And it's a brand new startup. This is the second year of the Innovation Center. Uh, and it, it, I'm so excited about what God is doing. During my vocational ministry uh, season, I have been a local church pastor. I've been an executive pastor, a senior pastor. Then I became a church trainer and consultant for prayer-fueled revitalization. And uh, now I'm at uh, United, and uh, I'm so excited that you've invited me to talk about my absolute favorite topic I'm passionate about. Yes, yes. And that, that topic is prayer. I think that the reason Sue came to mind for me uh, is that she just uh, released a book uh, less than a year ago called Open Road. And it really uh, focuses in on this idea of breakthrough prayer that she's led many churches through that are really significant to this kind of uncharted territory uh, before us, I think, as, as churches and frankly, who we are as the body of Christ, uh, wherever we are. Uh, so say a little bit about Breakthrough Prayer and this book called Open Road, because you had some other books that preceded that as well. So uh, the Breakthrough Prayer Initiative is a nickname that I gave uh, the, the concepts that I began to teach and train churches about several years ago. Uh, you know, Oswald Chambers wrote, he's the great devotional writer, Oswald mm -hmm. Chambers wrote mm -hmm. that just as our physical bodies need physical food to stay healthy, vibrant, strong, and growing. So the body of Christ, which is the church, uh, the food of the body of Christ, the church is prayer. Mm -hmm. And so is it any wonder that some churches are kind of weak listless, can become apathetic, don't want to do anything, and some churches can even can even die. Mm -hmm. Do you suppose that they're snacking on prayer rather than feasting on prayer? Wow. And uh, my dream, as well as what I've seen in my own ministry and in countless churches I've had the privilege to walk alongside, is that when we can learn to take prayer for God's new possibilities across the congregation ongoing. It changes everything. We start looking up and out for mm -hmm. God's open doors and new possibilities. And especially when we're praying along with that, that we'll surrender our own preferences and our own plans in order to make room to say yes to God's. This gives the Holy Spirit opportunities that we couldn't have even dreamed of. And this simple way to take prayer for new God possibilities, church-wide, all ages of the congregation ongoing, is what I've nicknamed a breakthrough prayer initiative. And that's what I've written about in the Open Road, Adventure of a Breakthrough Prayer Initiative book. Uh, it's published by Market Square Books. 
and it's available on Amazon and on the publisher's website. And I'm so glad you liked that book. Yeah, it was so wonderful. I told Sue I brought it back to the the prayer team at the church I'm serving right now, and it made a huge impact. I know that the the Breakthrough Prayer Initiative really came out of the missional church consultation that you were doing with churches. So I'd love for you to kind of talk a little bit about how that bubbled up. But I'd also like to hear about what was the what was the pain point, I guess, for these churches where this missional church consultation kind of came into being? So the missional church consultation uh, was a brand new revitalization initiative. I was appointed onto our West Ohio Conference Bishop's Executive Staff uh, several years ago now, and he had a, he had an assignment for me. He said, I want you to create a renewal revitalization initiative that could be helpful to any church in, of any size in any setting or ethnicity, uh, churches that are plateaued or maybe in a little decline and, and can't figure out how to jumpstart a new season of fruitfulness. And it, it seemed like a terrifying assignment, <laughs> uh, but I began years of a kind of R&D about what really are the what I call the floodgates that a church needs to open so that God's spirit can can rush through. And I was absolutely convinced that the very first thing that any church looking or ministry looking to move forward needed to do would be to begin this congregation-wide breakthrough prayer initiative to be praying for new God possibilities. And um I, so I, I invented a simple training. You know, we we in the church we're we do pray to God the Comforter, God the Sympathizer, yeah. um, God the Wisdom Giver, God the Healer, and and we should keep doing that. Yeah. But the Breakthrough Prayer Initiative is this little additive component to to those prayers where we're also praying to the to God the Almighty mm. to do the new thing to show us the new steps forward that will surrender ourselves. And so the very first step for every one of the eventually 200 churches that went through the missional church consultation was to launch and fuel this this congregation-wide prayer. And what I found was that even if a church did nothing else, if they implemented this everything started changing. Wow. New vitality, new members, new breakthroughs, new miracles, new mm-hmm. vitality, new giving. It was it was unbelievable. God must love that prayer. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, the Breakthrough Prayer Initiative training, which began as part of the Missional Church Consultation, began to be a training all on its own uh, wow. because churches everywhere have uh, invested in this, and uh, we could talk for hours about the miraculous stories that have unfolded. Okay, well, I'm going to have to have you tell at least one of those stories. But I, the thing that I love about Breakthrough Prayer is that it's so aligned with uh, in our in the Fresh Expressions movement, really the posture of listening that we're all called to, and and it's not like listening with for a limited amount of time, right? It's it's listening <laughs> for forever, uh, but but the posture of prayer required in in that listening and being present, right? And and um. And, and looking for where God is working already, paying attention. It, it's such a posture of attentiveness that Breakthrough Prayer calls you to, um, rather than necessarily a petition, right? And and then how you respond to that is so is so significant. And really, what we we talk about in the Fresh Expressions movement as well. We we listen, and then we love out of what we hear. And, and what that love looks like might not be what it looks like to us, but it might look like something different to somebody else. So and maybe maybe um, say a little bit about, um, uh, you know, what, what are some of the things that people hear in this breakthrough prayer that have led them to respond in some way? And then maybe one of the, just share one story. Uh, uh, well, thank you for the invitation to do so. So I'm thinking of a church in Valley City, North Dakota, uh, Epworth United Methodist Church in Valley City, North Dakota. And Valley City is a a college town. 
Um, it's not a, a really large town, but the the church sits within sight of the the small college there in in that city. And uh, the Epworth United Methodist Church in Valley City began a breakthrough prayer initiative. They they knew students were nearby. They wanted to impact their community uh, for good, and they just weren't sure how to do that. So they began praying, asking God to open doors and help them see new possibilities. And you know, what is one of the miraculous parts of, of praying for breakthroughs is that when everybody is asking God for breakthroughs, God begins to speak to many people mm-hmm. with the very same new ideas. So uh, it, it just so happened that the pastor of this church would walk the congregation out on the church's large parking lot Uh, after worship every Sunday, and they would stand out on the parking lot and pray the breakthrough prayer out there. And they'd face north and then south and east and west and ask God to uh, extend, you know, and open doors in all directions. And after a few months, a group of the congregation came up to pastor and said, uh, you know, Pastor, there was a drive through coffee kiosk in downtown Valley City that people like to drive through to get their morning coffee on the way to work that has closed and nothing like that exists in our town. Do you suppose that God is calling us to dig up part of our parking lot, put in plumbing, and create a little coffee kiosk and uh, get some baristas so that the whole town could drive through our parking lot and get their morning coffee, and we could show them the love of Jesus Mm -hmm. and invite them to everything God's doing at our church. And pastor, this was really a preposterous proposal. There was no money. There was no anything. (laughs) And to tear up the parking lot. But pastor had been praying for the breakthroughs, too. And pastor said, why don't you just explore if this would be possible? And in less than a year— there has been established a coffee kiosk that is open full time on the parking lot where the entire town, so to speak, comes for the morning coffee. And many, many people have met the love of Jesus Mm. through this outreach. Now, uh, that's just one little unique idea, but I, but I'm saying you never know what God's spirit has in mind. Uh, did you like that story? What did you think? Yeah, no, I, I just love, I love the fact that you, I mean, you said it like so matter of factly, and then you're like, this is preposterous <laughs> because well, we do, because we do have people, I think in the fresh expressions movement, or I should say we have people in the the church that come to us with some kind of wild ideas. And I think that too often they're shut down, right? Or, or we're called preposterous and not uh, potentially uh, taken to God in prayer as a community and, and thought about what's possible, right? Um, and, yeah. and I love how you've talked about, you know, the R&D, right? You, you just got to try, you just got to try some things, right? And trust that, trust that God is working in the midst of all of that. And, um, and that I, what I know to be true is that God doesn't waste anything, you know? Oh, what a great word. Absolutely. And for sure, I'm right with you when um, we have had people who like, who are dreaming a God dream to start something new, whether it's a new worshiping congregation or a new ministry, uh, when they start with a breakthrough prayer initiative, not alone, but with right. a team ongoing, it just gives all the room in the world, doesn't it? Yes. For what God has in mind. Yes. It is it is it is a matter, I think, of, of faithfulness and then our response, right? And and the rest is up to the rest is up to God. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness. So I guess over these last two years, I mean, you were doing this work you know, pre-COVID, prior to the pandemic, um, engaged with so many different churches in so many different contexts. What surprised you most about the church in the last two years? I have got to say, it has been so inspiring to see um, congregations and ministries who were already praying for God's new possibilities ongoing. Mm -hmm. When everything shifted to online, that they've they've gone forward with their prayers for breakthroughs 
um, online um, and, and thinking up whole new ways to keep praying for God possibilities under very different circumstances when we're not, we weren't congregating in person and that kind of thing. And I have a whole archive of incredible examples on how people who were quarantining and otherwise feeling rather isolated, continuing to uh, pray for breakthroughs Mm. uh, at home, uh, everything from uh, one very creative pastor uh, from a church in Minnesota, who uh, one Sunday morning uh, with online worship said to her congregation, hey, come with me, I'm at home and I want to show you the the breakthrough prayer stations around my home. (laughs) <laughs> and I want you, I want to invite you to set these up at your house and send us a little video or photos and you know we can all do this and she took them to the kitchen she had a little station and she said I I say I come in here every day and I say God um, mix up something brand new in my life and in the life of the church may your ingredients come together in a whole new way to a prayer station in a room and a prayer station and people love this set up prayer stations and for several months the church was showing on facebook and other social media little videos of people and their prayer stations at home and how god had done new breakthroughs and uh, i i believe that the prayers for breakthroughs have absolutely been fueled beyond our imagination through the last two years. And would you have guessed it, Heather? No. You know, it didn't it didn't fall away. It went even further. It was accelerated. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it really yeah. was accelerated uh to a to a great degree. I, I love the engagement that that pastor was able to have. Uh and really, you know, to some degree a a, a challenge or a, a an opportunity for people to think about their prayer lives differently at home as well. Yeah, you know, isn't that what it is uh when prayer becomes foundational and central to our lives, whether whether I am a no matter whether I'm a uh, have a staff position at the church, mm-hmm. whether I'm an attendee or whoever, when prayer for new God's pos- God's new possibilities becomes foundational in our lives, we we are looking up and out, expecting God to move, and that gives God so much room for what we could never imagine ourselves. That up and out. I mean, you've said that a couple of times in in regards to the breakthrough prayer, and you kind of walk people through what it looks like to um, to uh, create a breakthrough prayer for your particular church or your particular community um, in your book. But could you kind of give people the nuts and bolts of what that looks like? Well, I would love to. So here's what we've learned that. A great way to get it started is to create a little one sentence or two sentence breakthrough prayer using language like breakthrough, open the door, Mm -hmm. uh, what whatever verb Mm -hmm. like that that you'd like to use. And this is this is a little additive prayer to the existing prayer life of the congregation. It it isn't a long prayer that you you put in everything the church is already praying and add Mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. This is a little additive component. And uh, I've seen it be very effective to distribute that to everybody in your constituency, your Mm -hmm. team, Mm -hmm. and just explain every time we gather, when we're praying, we're also going to make sure we pray to the Almighty. Mm. to do the new thing. And it's not a prayer with a period. And then we just go on with business. It is a prayer request. It's like a question to God. So after we pray, we're going to go forward then looking up and out to see how God's response is going to unfold because it will on God's timing and in God's uh, preferred style. And um, some ministries or churches even pick a certain time of day and say every day we're going to all get out our little breakthrough prayer, pray it at the same time. And it is, it's really extraordinary that when we also then give people a chance to report back about what they've noticed and named God doing, that the momentum for this just builds and we begin to realize that it's unlimited what God can do. 
So you, you've kind of alluded to this a couple of times, and I know this is, I think, incredibly significant. Um, how has you? How have you seen this breakthrough prayer initiative and in different churches impact just discipleship as a whole? I love that question. I love that question. So as people truly live in to believing, not just an intellectual belief yeah. that prayer makes a difference, but believing actively that prayer makes such a difference that I'm going to pray every day, asking God to break through, and then noticing what God is doing in the church and in my life. It's just amazing how that feeds the spiritual hunger in people mm. uh, because the reality of the activity of the Holy Spirit is so unmistakable that uh, people want more. They, they, they long for more. They're, they're, they're in the, the game spiritually. And uh, it is the most effective thing I've ever seen to move people, as you're pointing out, from simply going to church and administrating the church as, it, as though it were, were an organization to administrate, yeah. to understanding the church is a spiritual movement. Mm -hmm. And when we step into that, we are on a roll with, with what God is, is doing and transforming in our lives, and that's discipleship. That's so good. The, the 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 conversation we were having having before I hit record, um, I, I found the words fear and fearless on your website when I was poking around, and there was there was a lot um, in regards to being a fearless church and um, fearless leaders and a fearful world. And so, uh, I guess, what are you seeing? What 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 are you seeing in these last um, you know in this last little bit? Maybe it's the last year. Maybe it's the last three years. Is far, that would that would um, really move you to to use that word so often? Um, <laughs> fear, fearful, and fearless, and <laughs> it, you know, any time that we're faced with an unexpected change mm -hmm. in our personal lives or in church life or on the ministry team. We really got some choices there, I think. Um, I know this for myself. I can batten down the hatches yeah. and just think I'm going to hang on till somehow, hopefully, this, this passes. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is, a, is kind of a fear-driven approach. Uh, and the, the chatter in my mind in a time like that it can be, Oh, this is terrible. What if this, what if that? And we can get so enmeshed in listening to our, our own mental chatter mm. that we just go into lockdown. And when I say fearless, uh, I really, I'm not talking about the absence of an emotion, you know, emotions yeah. come and go. I'm really talking about setting aside that endless, what if, fearful chatter of our minds mm -hmm. and really, really surrendering and saying, uh, God, all the energy in this potential season of change can move us forward. And we're going to surrender to it mm -hmm. and just move us forward through this. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to be yes people. We're going to be yes people in this. And so when I think of fearless leaders and fearless churches, I, I wasn't when I, I said that I wasn't really thinking of a lack of emotions, yeah. you know, that come and go. I was thinking about our spiritual posture, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to prayer. What are your thoughts? Yeah, well, and and, and the Almighty God, right? That <laughs> that we are that we yeah. are praying to. Uh, I think that's I think that's really significant to where the the fearlessness comes from, and maybe not so much as you say, uh, uh, being fearless, but fearing less. <laughs> There we go. Yeah. Yes, I yes, think I yes. preached a sermon about that at some point in time. Well, I like that. That can definitely <laughs> preach. <laughs> so, I mean, in, in, in your world now, like things have changed a lot. You're at United now and uh, in the Innovation Center, which we're all like cheering you on in the Fresh Expressions world Thank for you. that. Yes. Um, what What is your biggest challenge 
um, that you're facing, I think, and, you know, maybe it's in this context, maybe it's in the, you know, the wider global context of a, a pandemic that sev- seems to be never ending. What What is the biggest challenge you're facing? Yeah, what jumps to my mind are a number of things. <laughs> uh, and uh, so I'm, I'm thinking through that. One of the most important spiritual journey experiences I have ever had has been to be appointed for the Innovation Center's startup. Hmm. And uh, United Theological Seminary is an incredible place. Yeah. It has its own breakthrough prayer initiative going across the seminary for the last few years and has has itself experienced many breakthroughs wow. and views the a new innovation center as a breakthrough that they have stepped forward to make. That being said, uh, the innovation center, there was nothing that existed a year ago. There was not a plan. There was not an idea. There was not even an office space. All that had to be renovated. And the journey of the last year, uh, which has ranged from trusting God to, to supply people, resources, um, partners, uh, dream partners, uh, and and the whole what what should this be? All of that. This has been uh, the most miracle laced season mm-hmm. that I can remember, and also the most challenging. Not that the work. I'm not talking about the work. I'm talking about my own work to continue to surrender more and more. Wow. Uh, in order for God to really, uh, the God's spirit to really lead the way. And I think big chunks of myself have fallen away, uh, which has been positive, you know, my self preferences yes. and all of that in order for God's spirit to really lead. And isn't that what challenging seasons really are? There are opportunities to keep surrendering more of ourselves, more of what I prefer what I like better, what I want, or whatever, and say, God, I what I really desire is what you want, and I'm just gonna listen to you and step forward. And uh, what do you, what are you thinking as I'm sharing well, that? Well, I'm thinking I'm thinking that you've said a couple of things that are really significant. I mean, we we started out the conversation with talking about capacities, right, or or strategies, which maybe isn't the best word to use, but. Um, for this 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 future oriented church, uh, you've used the word trust. You've 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 again and again said looking up and looking out. You've described a, a, a fearlessness, and you've really just hit home with the surrender, the surrender. Uh, surrender and trust, I think, are, are almost hold hands, right? They <laughs> with one another, don't they? And I think those are things that we all can uh, lean into and uh, cultivate in our own lives as we look to do these new things and these new places and spaces uh, where God is is moving and working and inviting us to 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 be a part of that uh, movement and that work that that's that's there already. If I had to ask you where you are seeing signs of hope right now, what's giving you hope? Because there's a lot of, I think, some despair and some hopelessness. We're now through, I don't know, um, uh, the 30th wave of COVID, right? <laughs> what is giving you hope right now, Sue? I think that the most hopeful thing I see is that the pandemic for for the for all the pain and tragedy that it, it has brought, yeah. it has also given us the silver lining of uh, knocking us off our balance, mm. of uh, changing the game, of shifting the circumstances to the point that we are looking for new ways, for a new direction from God, that we realize we need a word from God. We yeah. we need something different. We we don't want to just be settled in going through the motions. Uh, this this is a time where we we've got to find our new true north forward, and it is the most spiritually opportunistic time that mm-hmm. I've ever seen. And prayer is the 
gateway, the gateway. I am passionate about this. And it, it, for something as simple as an added breakthrough prayer initiative, it can be eternally changing, life changing. Wow. 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 Thank you. Thank you for that. Is there, we all want to know, we all should be reading your book, um, Open Road, but we all also want to know what are you reading right now or, or what are you listening to right now? What's got your attention? Uh, the book that I just downloaded is Donald Miller's new book about a hero's journey. Have you seen that book? No, Heather? I have not. Uh, it just was released, uh, maybe a week ago, and I'm super excited about it. And he has shifted his uh, storytelling picture on how to frame your own life that mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. And I, I like this book because I, I think uh, you and I and others can extrapolate that to the story of the church That's that we're a part right. of. Yeah. And his contention is that the more clear we are about the kind of story that we're called to live, Mm. uh, the more fruitfully we can move forward. So that's a book that I just started reading and I find it very, very intriguing. Wow, that's awesome. I'll, I'll definitely have to check that out. I do love Donald Miller. His his work has uh, certainly impacted my life for sure, and I know many, many others. Yes. Sue, I would love for you to pray for the leaders, uh, the leaders, the pastors, the everyday people of God that are listening um, in this um, sometimes fearful world, uh, that they would be fearless in, in, uh, in light of their relationship with an almighty God. Would you pray for us? Uh, I'd be privileged to you. God, we give thanks that uh, you have called us with our lives to love you, to follow you, and to bring your love, the message and the mission of Jesus to your entire world. Uh, We ask that you would bless and anoint those who are along with with Heather and me on this podcast, that you would stir in each person's heart uniquely the way that your spirit has been so doing. Make it evident to each one about their path of prayers for new possibilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, may you grant us the willingness to surrender all that we are in order to make room for everything you have in mind in the open road of faith and possibility before us. We ask all of this in the power of our resurrected Jesus, and we say together, amen. 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 Thank you so, so much, Sue. Thank you so much for your time. I'm so excited to have you at United and doing the work that you're doing and with the open hands of surrender to where God is leading you and guiding you. uh, We will be all the better for it. So thank you so much for your time. And y'all make sure that you find Sue online. We'll post all the links to where you can do that in the show notes. Thanks again. Thank Thank you so much. God bless.